The Fed, of course, surprising markets with a pivot towards a more neutral stance sooner than expected by most Fed observers and by markets, also acknowledging that it discussed interest rate cuts at the meeting uh, this week. Uh, what changed here? OK, well, it backed off future rate hikes fairly definitively. The chair acknowledged the simple proposition that if inflation falls, the Fed can cut rates, something that Fed Governor Waller had talked about earlier. The average Fed forecast now sees three rate cuts in 2024. That is equal, by the way, to the decline it forecasts in inflation next year. So it's worth pointing out here, as excited as everybody wants to go, money's not going to be free again. Fed officials, on average, do not forecast loosening financial conditions on a real or inflation-adjusted basis. In addition to strong bond and stock market rallies you all know about, the probability of a March rate cut rises now, call it 90 percent, uh, from 46 percent. And it now pricing in from the given minutes they take a mile department, markets pricing in seven rate, high, rate cuts in 2024. Uh, sorry, that should be rate cuts. Apologies for that. Um, for 2024, with a year-end rate now of 372. Fed Chair Powell did couch all of this in caveats. Inflation has to keep coming down and stay down. The job market has to keep loosening. And economic growth is expected to moderate. If not, Powell said, hey, the Fed could hike again. One of the big effects of the Fed pivot is the inevitable loosening of financial conditions, lower bond yields, higher stock prices. They could make the Fed's inflation fight harder, which is why many were surprised the committee went as far as it did yesterday. Maybe just as important as whether the Fed's pivot is global. My quick read of the rhetoric at the BOE, they sound a little bit tougher. They say they are not convinced that services, inflation, and wages are on a downward path. And now we await the ECB and whether Lagarde holds the line more so. However, it is difficult for those two banks to remain quite as tough as, uh, as, as they had been, given what's happening at the Federal Reserve. All of their bond yields fell along with U.S. Treasuries. And now, of course, Mike, as you know, currencies are in play with the weakening of the dollar relative to the uh, euro uh, uh, yesterday. Exactly, um, Steve. And, you know, with regard to this idea that financial conditions are rushing to loosen even more uh, and whether that makes the, the Fed's job harder, Powell didn't really seem to want to seize upon that point, at least not too vociferously yesterday. So what's underlying this, uh, this decision to, you know, in a more transparent way, pivot toward uh, seeing easing over the horizon, do you think? It's just a buildup of good inflation numbers? You know, I went back and tried to figure out, you know, was there some uh, telltale sign that we all missed out there? I went back and read his remarks at uh, Spelman at the end of November. Um, I, 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 it's, it, it's not a straight line from his last remarks to today. I think a couple things. Uh, yesterday's PPI, I don't think you can underestimate that because of the effect it has on the PCE that's coming next week. It's going to really help that number. And we saw a bunch of economists bring down their forecast for the Fed's preferred inflation indicator next week. I think that the market maybe had a more hawkish interpretation of the CPI this week than uh, maybe Fed Chair Powell had. In addition, I think his committee was moving, and Powell always likes to be sort of in the center of his committee. I think they were feeling like, hey, we are high, we've been high. And then this notion that Fed Governor Waller had laid out is just, it's not really a surprise. It's just, it's just sort of saying the quiet part out loud. If inflation falls, then the Fed can cut rates. Yeah, this is kind of where the math is. The other piece of it is, and I think maybe this uh, was what underlies this idea that maybe they'd be a little bit more hesitant to go this way, is the notion that the last stretch of ground before you get to a 2% uh, inflation target is somehow more difficult than each percentage point before that. And, I mean, Powell was sort of noncommittal on that idea. I think that's one of those things that's said without necessarily having uh, a firm basis in why that would be the case. Right. I mean, so the theory behind that is that you got all of this improvement in inflation from really resolving the supply side issues and that the, the, next, the next bit was going to be the impact of Fed rate cuts and that was going to be Fed rate hikes. And that was going to be uh, more difficult and more challenging for the economy. Um, I, there's no evidence behind that. There's it's just it's just an idea that the last bit was going to be tougher. And it's also, I think, significant. I think the market took a big signal from this. It's been said before, perhaps not by the chairman. I don't remember necessarily, but that the Fed could be cutting rates before the um, uh, Fed hits the 2% inflation target. 
Oh, I believe he said that in a, a very hypothetical yeah. way in a prior press conference, but that was when it was so right. far in the future that, you know, it, yeah. it, it didn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of bearing uh, on that. You know, I was pointing out, too, that if you looked at the rest of the projections in terms of what the economy might do, where unemployment might go, it's not exactly like this economy is, in, is reaccelerating and it's boom times. You know, it's still talking about less than 2% GDP, non, a real GDP, and 4.1% on the unemployment rate, which is a bit higher from where we are. Right, so it's four tenths higher than the unemployment rate. And then, of course, they do have the economy running below potential at 1.4% GDP next year. And I think that's a part of the forecast. They still want to see this economy uh, moderate. They still want to see the job market loosen up. All of those are key. Um, and I don't know, Mike, what your thing is. If you don't mind, I'll throw it back at you. Yeah. Uh, did the market get ahead of itself here? And, and I, I think the market has trouble processing nuance, right? It's all zeros or ones as far as the market is concerned. Um, but when I look at the real projected rate for next year, it's still 2.2%, which is the same real projected uh, rate for this year. So the Fed, in its own mind, from a real basis or an inflation basis, is not really loosening up the reins that much. No, it isn't. I, I, I mean, the market, I think, always has that impetus to say, once we know what the direction is going to be, and it's an acknowledged thing that those are the next moves, uh, you know, we're going to push on that and see what happens. But I think we also have to keep in mind how much can change in four or six months. Remember, right after the SVB regional bank crisis, the market was pricing in rate cuts by the end of this year. Right. I mean, it was sort of right. at this mode of saying, right. you know, it's, it's just almost a reflex way, reaction. Regional right. banks have done pretty well. If you they've look been, at they've done great. The right. rally in bonds then, is taking up. all the pressure off those balance sheets. All right. Let me just see a show of hands. I don't uh, know if you can put me... all four of us on screen. I, I want to see Steve, Andrew, me, Mike. Put everybody on screen for a second. If you can do a four box. I don't know if we can do that in this new world. Sorry to call this out of the green. But guys, what I want you to think about is were you surprised yesterday by Powell's language. Raise your hand if you were at all surprised by his language. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. I, I thought he spoke the truth, but I was a little surprised to hear him say it out loud. Okay, now raise your hand if you were surprised, even shocked, by how quickly yields and every other market move, too. Like, that caught me off guard. Only modestly. I, I think. I just couldn't believe it. Like, to, yeah. to the way the yields in particular, yeah. how quickly they fell. I was like, what? I'll you tell have you, been spring-loaded all feeling, year, and I think that's an issue. Yeah, I think if you were going to say that I out thought loud, what he the said out loud, conference. they would move. But go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Steve. I, I was just going to say, I thought this press conference was the one he was going to give in January. I thought he had an interest yeah. in holding the line one more meeting. Um, I, I thought for sure this was coming. I'd also give you a little reporter's notebook here. All of my questions that I had prepared ahead of time, before Threw seeing out. the statement, obviously, <laughs> were, were more we're more confrontational in the sense of why aren't you reacting to the change in inflation? <laughs> why? Yeah, yeah. How would you insist the market is wrong here? And of course, he didn't. You know, those questions were not necessary because of the steps that the Fed took towards towards the market here. And maybe and, and that explains. I know what Powell, maybe that explains some yeah. of that. Like, I thought it was a very human response. Mike made a very good point earlier. He had to deal with the reality of the dot plots, people seeing the, the Fed was expecting these cuts to come. Right. And he also had to project um, commentary that was reflective of the comments around the table that he'd been hearing for the last two days, too. That gets to the comment I made earlier, that he was sort of losing his committee or needed to wanted to be more in the middle of his committee when it came to uh, uh, policy here. And his committee... It clearly had moved to a place where, if you look at the dots, it's interesting. Um, five officials, I call them maybe the dissenting dots, or they might have been the dissenting dots. Five officials have 100 basis points of cuts or more built in. We don't know who those are, um, but, but some are looking to be easing even more. Now, all of this, of course, is conditional. I do want to point out one other thing that's, I think, a topic for later today or tomorrow next week, is a lot of folks went in to ride the treasuries in the 10 years, they were happy clipping coupons at the Treasury, um, and where they were happy collecting 4% or 5%, and, 
at their money market funds? Are they feeling like they made a mistake? Do they need to come rushing back into the market? Um, what's going to be the effect? A lot has changed in the last 24 hours. A lot has changed about the investment thesis. And we need to start thinking about, well, what does all this mean now for where you had your money before? Does it need to go back into stocks? Is investing right now at the Dow at a record? Is that the right question?